What's going on YouTube? Today I got a couple projects for my 2020 Polaris 850 Assault. I picked this up last year, right at the end of the season, and so far it's only got 146 miles on it. So I'm really excited to put a little bit more time on it this winter. But before I do, I want to get the Polaris tether kit installed for it. Um, I'm coming from a Skidoo, so I'm used to having the tether and the security of that. So I wanted to add that. And then I also picked up the fire and ice intake kit. Um, so I'm going to do an installation video on these two since I have to have the air box and everything apart to do the tether anyways. Um, so I saw this kit on the Players Access owner's Facebook page. I thought it was kind of neat. Um, all it is is it simply will go up top here to add some more breathability to the air box instead of just the factory uh, intake vents down here. So we're going to go ahead and start taking it apart. All right, so I'm sure everybody knows how to get the side panels off. Next up is we got to pop the hood off. So we got to take the Zeus fasteners out here. And then um, underneath the hood, we've got one connector here. And you just push the tab down and pull, and that comes apart, which allows the whole hood to lift up and come off after that. Okay, according to our player's instructions, our next step was we have to remove the upper intake plenum. Um, to do that, we cut this zip tie down here, which it does supply one in the kit. And then we've also have to remove these two push pins. Um, to do that, I got this trim panel tool, is what I've always called it or whatever, but we use them in the auto body industry to uh, help, you know, remove door panels and the push pins and stuff that are commonly used in automotive fasteners. And you can just get behind them, pop the inside out, and then they'll pull out just like this. All right, so now we got the push pins off and the zip tie cut. This thing comes out of here. Um, the lips that are on this thing that hold it in place here, these tabs, uh, I was kind of surprised how much force it actually took to remove it out of here. So you really got to give it a tug on that thing to get it out. All right, so, so for the next step, they want you to remove these two electrical connectors from the ECU. And you just pop this little tab up and pull down, and the connector comes right off. Same thing with this one here. Now, I'm kind of surprised in the instructions, they don't tell you to unhook the battery. Um, in my opinion, I feel like you should probably be unhooking the power when you're doing this, but if Polaris doesn't say to do it in their instructions, I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so for our next step here, we've got our two T40 torques we got to remove here, as well as two more push pins down here on the sides. Okay, so now that our two push pins and our T40 torques are removed, it wants us to just lift this piece, the upper plenum, up and out. And of course, there's still more attached, but it doesn't tell you about. Grab our trim panel tool here. So that is our pyrometer, looks like, for the exhaust. So now our whole upper intake plenum comes out. So now I'm going to just set this on the bench and uh, get ready to work on this to cut the holes for our vents. All right, next up is we have to remove our tank trim cover here. Um, so on the clutch side, you just remove your clutch tool, and this will actually separate apart here. Again, we got another push pin on the... Uh, Brake side here, I believe we got two push pins. We got one here and one here. And then underneath the gas cap, we've also got this nut that's gonna have to be removed, which I'm not really sure I'm gonna do that yet without marking it up. So let me figure that out and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so what I found ended up working was this huge pair of uh, channel locks. 
Um, I tried originally wrapping this in a towel and I think it made it worse because it was, you know, trying to prevent it from getting all marked up here, but it uh, made the pliers slip off even easier. But it doesn't actually even really have much pressure or anything on it. It's just a pain in the nuts to get it broke free. So once it's broke free, it spins right off and falls on the ground. Okay, so now that our nut is off here, um, probably a good opportunity to clean any dirt and stuff that's accumulated in there. Uh, this whole upper tank cover now will come off. Um, you do have to be aware that your uh, pull rope is still connected to it, right? So you're not actually gonna be able to take this thing all the way off, but you can at least kind of lift it and get it up out of the way like this. Just kind of set it off to the side. Um, all your harness connectors are now inside this uh, fabric bag here. Um, so you can un -velcro this and take the uh, cover right off. And then this connector down here that is blank and has the two pins in it that are blocked off, that's gonna be our connector for our tether to go into. All right, so now I'm gonna take a second to show the actual instructions here. So it points out in here where you can put the tether. You can either put it on the side of this tank cover or you can put it right dead center. And that's what I'm gonna do. Um, the problem is, is if you look at that tank cover in the picture, right here, right? And you look at this one, they're totally different. So the instructions show everything for the RMK. So as trail guys with indies and assaults, we have to figure something else out. So what I found is, Right here in the very front, uh, there's a good amount of room right here under the stem, and uh, that's where I'm going to decide to put this one. I want it dead center. There's enough room. You can put it really wherever you want in this, um, but I want it dead center. The main reason is if I want to do go off trail with it and do some side hilling or whatever, I want to make sure that it's symmetrical. You know, if it's way off to one side and I hang off to the other side, and I don't want a chance of it pulling off inadvertently and... I think the symmetry looks good, as well as the fact that I just bought a brand new coat, and I don't even really remember which side my tether clasp is on. So, center is going to work best. All right, so for this next part, we're actually going to drill the hole now. Um, the instructions say a half inch bit, so I'm going to start with a quarter. Uh, probably don't actually need a pilot hole with plastic like this, but it's um, going to help keep it from walking around. I hope. So we're gonna find approximate center here and then uh, drill our hole. <laughs> Looks good enough for me. Now let's swap to the half inch bit. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the tether actually off from the switch itself as well as the nut on top and the first thing is you have to install this washer and then go ahead and feed it in from the back side like this and now we can go ahead and put the nut on it and tighten it up uh, this is a three-quarter inch wrench for the top side and the bottom side is crescent wrench which fits everything Okay, so now that I've got this all tightened up, we can go ahead and set this somewhat back in place. Uh, obviously, we can't attach it yet without connecting our tether. So we'll come around to this side now, grab our tether wire, and we will connect these two together. Switch hands here. Just like this. So we'll have our blue and black wire it's actually blue with a black stripe it looks like and black goes to the brat black and brown stripe on the tether all right i had to set the camera down because i took a couple hands to get this bag back together and the velcro tightened back up now that that's done, I took the gas cap back off. The only reason I put it on was to make sure we didn't get any dirt or plastic when we were drilling our hole, falling in the gas tank. Uh, brand new sled, I still really don't want to change the new fuel filter. So we'll swing this bad boy back into place and uh, start getting everything lined back up. And then we'll go ahead and put our reinstall our push pins and our clutch tool right here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the fuel filler neck trim piece, whatever you want to call this thing. That was ridiculously tight to get off. Um, I'm gonna snug it up with my hand as far as I can. I don't see why this won't be adequate. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe I should try to put the pliers back on it. You really don't want to damage this thing. If somebody made this in like billet or something, it would probably be a good idea. I mean, I don't really see a reason to keep taking this tank cover off for any reason, but if you did, you did have to. This just gets stinged up so easily. It's kind of, kind of sad. All right, so now Tether's just hanging out here, out of the way, clean insulation, and it'll just snap down on here like so, and looks good. And I can just clip this up out of the way to the throttle cable for the time being, so looks good. Now let's work on the intake. All right guys, so for this next step, this is the entire reason I wanted to make this video. Um, I saw a couple of these different intake kits out there. Boondocker makes them, SLP, this one that's the fire and ice kit. And the fire and ice one was the one to me that really looked the best. I, it's simple, it's clean, you know, it's black, there's no raw aluminum, whatever. It, it, it just, to me, looked the nicest. The problem that I found is after I bought this was that the installation instructions don't exist at all. Um, I bought it from mntnk.com. Uh, very happy with them. Their shipping was great. I had them in three days. I mean, awesome, right? Instantly shipped. You got a tracking number right off the bat. And I was very impressed. The problem was, was that included in the box, it said, visit our website for installation instructions. And if you scroll on the bottom of their page, there are in fact installation instructions for just about everything on their website, except this. I didn't find any installation instructions on this. So I wanted to make this video. If you already had a tether installed, don't care about tether install and had to skip over the beginning of it, that's fine. But from here on out, this is the installation of these intakes. And had they included instructions, I would have had a template probably, I would assume, to cut out for these. So I'm gonna have to make a template. Uh, we're gonna have to sit, split the upper intake box and to multiple pieces. And it's really kind of more of a project than I thought it was gonna be. So sit back and relax because this is the main part of the video. All right, so the first step I found is that all these T25 Torx bits are gonna have to be removed. And that's going to split this upper and lower halves of the intake box apart. Here's we got just the six screws. Let's get these out of our way here so I don't lose them. Okay, so now shake that thing around and it splits apart. So I'm gonna set the lower half to the side. I know it seems weird because everything's upside down right now. All right, so here's our original intakes with the pre-filter stuff on the back side of them. So now this top section is where we're going to be cutting here as well as the sides on both of them to install these vents. So I'm going to take a second and I'm going to try to trace these onto some paper, make a little bit of a template, and then trace them onto the box. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet how I want to cut them. Uh, probably a body saw with a real fine metal blade would be the best way to do it. It's gonna be slow going because the fine teeth really are gonna cut the plastic pretty slow. Um, I don't currently have a body saw. I probably should have bought one before doing this video. Um, but I'm going to, I believe, try to use a razor blade for a lot of it and score the plastic. It seems to be pretty soft, flexible. So I'm gonna give that a shot first. And if that doesn't work, then we'll uh, try to find Maybe a cutoff wheel on a, I have a small three inch air grinder. We'll give that a shot. All right, I think I changed my plan on the template thing. And the reason is, is once you've got this intake off, these things pretty much sit right in place where they need to go, right? So I think what my plan is, is I'm gonna drill the holes first because the holes are gonna outline where, essentially where it needs to be cut and where it doesn't. So then at that point, I'll cut just out between the holes 
and then uh, just work with maybe a Dremel or something and continue enlarging them until I get the right pattern here. Okay, so what I'm using for this is a 530 seconds drill bit. And uh, I drilled the first hole here, and all I did was I took the push pin apart. That's all these are held in by is push pins. Um, so I took that apart, so I just have only the bottom in here. And uh, now that I've got that to hold the rest of the vent in place, I'm gonna go ahead and drill our four remaining holes. Okay, so now that I've got all five holes drilled, I'm gonna start with just the one. I'd rather not screw up all of them at the same time. So I'm gonna try to do just this one side first and then continue on the rest. Now, one thing I did just find was that the front half of this hole, if you look where this is drilled, the air box doesn't actually extend out to this. So I don't really know what I wanna do if I'm gonna drill that or cut that whole section out yet or not. I might just leave it. So we'll see how it looks. Um, so I'm gonna start with just cutting this area out and lay the vent on at that point if it uh, doesn't really look that good. You know, if you can see through this part but not here and it looks like shit, then I'll just uh, probably cut that as well. Okay, I did use a utility knife on this, um, hence the crude squared off cuts that look totally like garbage. However, we set this thing down here and we set our vent on and line up our holes, we're pretty close. So I think what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll go around now with a Dremel and just hog out the last little bit of stuff just to clean it up, finish our line. Like I said, I'm still undecided yet about this front area. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the vent on the other side on first before I make a decision on this one. But uh, so far so good. It's taken a little bit longer than I was hoping and uh, you know, this whole thing would have been, like I said, a lot better had they just included some sort of a template. But as of right now, it's working all right. So let's get to it. Okay, so now I got that pretty well cleaned up. Um, I ended up using a carbide burr on the Dremel and then finished it with kind of a fine sanding wheel at lower RPM, and then just use a fingernail and even to pick a little bit of the burrs away. So now I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead quite a bit and start working on these other vents. Same process, so. All right, so after probably 45 minutes of messing around with this, here's what I came up with. Um, so what I had some success with on the bigger ones was actually using a half inch drill bit that I used for my tether installation and drilled a hole here and here and use a Milwaukee hacksaw with a kind of a thin blade now that's way too aggressive teeth but all I had was that small wood blade around here that was skinny enough to do some of the curved cuts and I just kind of roughed it out with that. Um, then I went back and trimmed with a razor blade and then finally uh, ground the corners and such with the Dremel and then finishing off with the sanding drum on the Dremel. Um, the sanding drum did leave some burrs and stuff, even more so than these. So I went through and actually used a little bit of 220 sandpaper, tried to sand the edges up as good as I could, but for the most part, I think this is gonna be fine. Now, one thing I've decided to do with this, the factory intakes that go in, you know, they're not exactly sealed to anything at all, which is probably fine. But I'm also slightly concerned that these plastic rivet things might not necessarily be that super secure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a really, really thin bead of black RTV on the backside of these. I'm doing it for two reasons. One, to help obviously seal it up just in case something was to flex or move out of the way, whatever, and end up with a gap here. I don't want to end up stucking snow dust into it. But the other thing is, is... It's gonna help as an extra bit of glue, just in case. I mean, some of these things I got a little close on the edge here. You know, and if one of these breaks, I don't wanna have an issue with the vent flapping around and falling off and losing the rivets or whatever. So I'm gonna put a really, really thin bead RTV on the backside of these, stick them into place, and we'll go from there. All right, so I got a bunch of little dabs on here. So I'm gonna go around and just start spreading this out and doing my absolute best to keep it off the screen. I'm sure if I get any in the screen here, there's no way I'm gonna be able to clean it up. 
All right, so I got my thin little bead RTV around here. I'm gonna start uh, pushing our push pins in here, getting these things locked into place. And see, this is exactly right here where I wanted to put just a touch RTV on. You know, once I get this rivet in, I'm sure it's going to be enough to hold it in, but just to be safe, a little extra adhesion isn't going to hurt anything. Okay, and here's the finished product. I got to tell you, I think it looks freaking awesome. Um, I'm actually really glad I did not cut out the front of the uh, small vents here. In the direct light, it's kind of actually hard to tell because um, it's got that same kind of sheen as the rest of the screen. But uh, I really think it would have just turned into a pain. It would have got into that section here where that other rivet's coming through, and it just could have turned into a nightmare. So you can see a little bit of the RTV pushed through the backside, which I'm kind of glad about. It means it actually sealed. Um, it didn't seem to leave any real mess or anything out here. And overall, I'm really happy with it. Um, I think it actually looks even a lot cooler than the stock intake. So if anybody knows of any links that uh, replace these with a pretty similar looking, you know, aluminum powder coated stuff, let me know because these, uh, these used to look really cool, but now I'm loving the look of this. So let's go ahead and uh, flip it upside down. We'll get the other box back reinstalled in it and we will get this thing back together. There it is, all back together. And once again, like I said, can't even tell that that's not cut out. So I really, really am happy with this. Um, it uh, definitely was more of a project than I was hoping for. And it very easily could have been alleviated had they just included instructions that had a template that you traced onto here or scribed on or something. But it is what it is, that's why I made this video. So let's go ahead, get the upper plenum back on, get the sled back together and fire it up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set this upper plenum back on. Should just sneak into place here. Let's get our brake hoses and wires out of the way. It's our wire for our tether now that we've just added. There. And if it's down into place, oops, almost. Oh, it's actually a lot more of a pain in the butt than I thought it was gonna be. All right, there it is. Back into place, now we'll get the push pins back installed, our two torque screws up top, and we're good to go. All right, next up we got here, we've got to reinstall our two ECU pins. So we're gonna get these connected and then we'll put our uh, air box piece back in. All right, like I said, when I took this apart, reinstalling this thing and it snaps in pretty hard. So now I gotta go get our push pins and uh, get these lined back up, snap that back in. We're ready to put our hood back on and start it. All right, so I went ahead and set the camera down and put all the body panels back on since I was doing it by myself. And putting a hood on with one hand is not really that much fun. So we'll go ahead and give it a test fire now. And Oh, hang on. I had the tether in the wrong spot here. Sure. Okay, so I do have to make a disclaimer with all this though. This is the second time I've done this. And the reason I say that is, is because in the Polaris instructions right here, it specifically tells you when you put the tether in from the bottom, from the bottom side up. See number two here? Place washer onto tether cord assembly. Well, let me tell you what. You put that washer on there and it's just enough extra thickness that when you go to tighten the nut down here, 
the tether won't actually engage. So I cranked this thing over for like five, 10 seconds. It didn't start. I held my thumb down on the tether and it fired. So it wasn't letting it come in contact with the actual little push button switch here. So I just took it back apart, took the washer off the bottom and now it works fine. So that's uh, that's a little bit of install tip right there. Just keep that washer out. I don't know why Polaris recommends throwing a zinc plated washer in place when they should have just made it the right height in the first place. But apparently it is the right height because it works better without the washer. So there you have it. There is the tether install as well as the fire and ice intake kit for 2015 to 2021 Polaris Axis sleds. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, keep checking back. Um, I'm hoping to make a couple more videos of snowmobiles this winter. Um, we've got the skid currently out of the so 6600X. Um, shocks are getting rebuilt at high gear currently. So we'll have this reassembled shortly. And we've got a couple other sleds kicking around. So maybe we can do some snowmobile videos this winter. And maybe I'll see a couple of you guys up on Tug Hill and pray for snow.